Welcome back to part two, beautiful people. I think this part represents Japan nicely. Look at this nice little slice of sushi we're gonna get out of here. Rest from here to here, we're gonna cut into six slices. Three for Korea and three for Argentina. Here's our perfect Kobe square to cut our nigiri from off of. The rest we cut in half for Korea and Argentina. Good God, that's a thing of beauty. Raz, dva, three beautiful steakies all in a row. Does anybody remember Beaker from the Muppets? Well, this is his hair right here. We gotta cut off the top of his head and get that hair out of the way. And then we're gonna slice these scallions. Just chop the whites off, easy breezy. But save these greens for later. And the onions go into the blender. Repeat after me, apple. Remove the skin from the apple. Once you remove the skin, the seeds, the stems, we throw it into the blender. Eight garlic cloves, they go in the blender. Blender. Who do I love? Ginger do I love. Except it's all knobby and skinny and blah, it's all misshapen. We gotta cut all this stuff off. All right, here we go. We got the good stuff. Let's chop it up. And wouldn't you know it, eh, throw it in the blender. What do you do with two kiwis when you're making kalbi? Well, you take the skins off, you chop them up, and uh, oh, you throw them in a blender. Some water to help them all connect and puree. Soy sauce, I don't know, a third cup. Brown sugar, why do you taste so good? The controversial corn syrup, it'll give it a nice sheen. Maybe a little sake. What do you think? Glug of mirin. Sesame seed oil. It's potent. Don't go too crazy. Crushed black pepper. We need more pepper. How about about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper? Yeah. And that might be the most ingredients you've ever seen on this show. Finally, what we'd all been waiting for. Blending it all together. How satisfying is that? Let's just pour a bit of our marinade into a bowl to marinate. Let's put one of our slices down, a little bit more marinade, another slice on top, kind of like we're making a lasagna of marinade. And a little bit more marinade after that, and soak them all up until they're completely covered in our kalbi marinade. We're gonna cover this one up and set it in the fridge for overnight. Let's move along to Argentina. We're gonna take our next piece that we're gonna cut into three slices and go ahead and do that. Uno, dos, tres pieces, sweethearts in a row. Now, if we're gonna have Argentinian steaks, we're gonna have to have some nice chimichurri. Grab yourself a nice bunch of parsley such as this and jam it into a food processor, just like that. Smush it. Some crushed red pepper flakes. I'll sprinkle you a wee bit of dried oregano. Paprika. Let it rain kosher salt from heaven. One, two, three, four cloves of garlic. Olive oil to bind them all together. Let's fill it up. Glugly glug glug. I got some nice white balsamic. And then pulse the crash out of it. All those gotta go down into there. Keep going. Pour it into our serving bowl. Put it in the fridge and it's ready to go. Yeah. Okay, sushi rice, here we go. Get some really good, high quality, really tiny grain sushi rice. You're gonna wanna rinse it thoroughly about three times, get rid of all that white water. Then you're gonna put it into the rice maker. Make sure you got a really good quality one like I do. Then about three parts water to two parts rice and set it for the sushi setting and you wait. What do I love about Argentinian steak? The simplicity. It's just some salt that we're gonna sprinkle along and we are going to grill it. Argentina one, Argentina two, Argentina three. Korea one, Korea two, Korea three. Sushi rice is done. Two tablespoons sugar, teaspoon of salt, rice vinegar for some balance. Mix it up, make mama proud. You got yourself some seasoned sushi rice. We're gonna need some nice little cute sushi rice beds for a Kobe. Let's see, how do they do this again? And now for the cutting of the sushi. 
Get yourself a thumb, get yourself some squishy wasabi, and you just squish it up and down the little beds of cute little rice we made. We're creating harmony. Spicy, sour, salty, sweet. We lay down our Kobe, but we're gonna give it a nice smoky flavor and still keep it rare with our blowtorch. Check out that subtle crust. I finalized this a couple ways, but I certainly love gyoza sauce. I don't know why, I tried it once and it just worked perfectly. More balance. A little sprinkling of sesame seeds and we're good. Oh, let's begin plating. Okay, we have our sushi going down. Let's dice up some spring onions and sprinkle it over our kalbi. Oh, Korea, you're gonna be delicious. Let's throw some sesame seeds over Korea as well for good form. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gastronomeria. We are gonna try this amazing cut that we were bestowed over at Kincaid's. Kincaid's. The guys are so cool over there. Weren't they awesome? Oh, yeah, great, great experience. So great let experience. Us, so let us in the back. Yep. And, Absolutely. And who'd have thought he'd just go in the back and just whip out this amazing slab? of A5 Japanese short rib. Beef short rib, guys. Yeah, yeah. You've had beef short rib before, but I don't think any of us one have of had the most, it like One this. of the most flavorful cuts of beef there is, yet in A5. I've never had it. I know you've never had it either. No, sir. How could we possibly say no? <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't. You it, couldn't. Would be, it would be a crime. Yes. It would have been a crime to say no. Furthermore, to that point, it would be a crime to just take that piece of meat and just throw it on a pan or a grill and just eat it like that. I mean, it wouldn't be a crime, it would be delicious, but why not take it and just make the most out of it, right? Absolutely. Yep, so, yep. And we've done that. You've done that. I'm I'm so excited to try this. This is going to be great. We've done that. We've done <laughs> So, what I thought, and as I mentioned earlier, let's think of three major ways of making steak. What are the three king countries of steak, or queen countries, whatever have you. Um, first thing that came to my mind was Japan. Since it came from Japan, why not do it in a sushi style, right? Mm -hmm. As you watched it, so we blowtorched it, and we watched all that beautiful fat from the Wagyu seep into that delicious seasoned <laughs> sushi rice that we made. And we put Just soaking it up, right? Just, just Just get, so it, get it in there. And then obviously, what what I thought of next was just like, what's the most delicious oh, Korean kalbi style short ribs, right? Yes, absolutely. Have you been? Have you guys been to those Korean barbecue restaurants where you grill at your own table? Have you? Oh, many times. If yes. you guys haven't done it, get yes. it get it on your to do list because it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful treat. Find a place to do it and go get it done. Yes, and and then they bring you all those little sides with, with the. Like for example, the kimchi or all other sorts of kimchi, the radishes, radishes, the cucumbers, oh. the little potatoes that are like pickled or something. Yeah. It's all delicious. It's all amazing. It's all you need to know. It's all delicious. They, they'll wrap it sometimes in a in a lettuce yep. leaf or something. You can do that too. With some fresh garlic. So Absolutely. we have that in that style. So it's a marinated piece. I've never marinated an A5 before because everybody's all you purists out there will be like, well, what are you doing marinating A5? Why not? We're just trying it out. And of course, we had to do it in a, just a traditional format. So I thought, Argentinian. Argentinian, just straight salt and flame, mm. the way beef was meant to be. Uh, but and we have a nice little chimichurri we made here from scratch, didn't we? We made this for you, Daryl. Oh, I could, I could eat it like pudding. Look at just, just, just with a spoon. Smell that. Just with smell a spoon. Smell chimichurri, garlic and parsley and oh, all that good stuff. So good. So that's gonna go on that. Now, you've heard us talk, you've watched us make it, you saw the interview over Kincaid's. I say we just shut up and eat it. Probably enough talking. Enough talking. Yeah. Daryl, guest of Hanor, where shall we begin? I say probably because it's closest to us and will take the least amount of time to get from there to our bellies. Let's go with the sushi style. Now be very careful because it's fragile. <laughs> very fragile. <laughs> very fragile. Electric sex in the window. <laughs> Those of you who are Christmas fans. Very, d oh wow. Now guys, there's no, um, I guess, there's no delicate way to do no, this. No, I, th I think you almost do it like you're shooting like a like a piece, like a regular sushi piece, right? Yeah, and just kind of yeah. get, I won't be able to, I won't be able to get it all in. 
That's it. That's it. That's right. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. I want to get some other rice. No. From all the waiting and talking, it's definitely cooled down a bit. But you taste the flame for the blowtorch. A little bit of the sourness that we add a little bit of the rice wine vinegar to season, a little bit of sugar. Um, and then that mm. gyoza dipping kind of, sometimes we use soy sauce and mirin to kind of glaze it. Mm -hmm. But I like to use gyoza dipping sauce. I just think it, it pairs perfectly with the sesame in it. Now, Denny, I think you cooked it perfect. You think of sushi being raw, right? Mm -hmm. I think with with meat, with beef, there's a little bit of a different perspective, right? If you don't, mm -hmm. the safety part, the safety mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you cooked it perfect. Yeah. Like, I didn't want it to be a carpaccio, but I also wanted to have a little bit of, you know, flavor. And I think the flame gives it a little more flavor, too, mm -hmm. don't you? Mm hmm Absolutely. We're looking for balance in everything that we eat. Daryl, I think we're going to save the traditional one for last. Okay. Well, by traditional, I guess that's all relative. Mm -hmm. But... I'm dying to try the kalbi, the Korean style. Do it. All right, sir. Okay. If I may serve you. Yes, please. Now remember, this is a very fatty cut of beef. Ugh. So don't, hold on. You got some, some things that fell off here. Morsels. Some morsels. All right, so here we go, guys. This is actually the one I've been waiting for the most because I just love Korean food and I love marinated beef. Yeah, tell us a little more, Dennis, about what you did on the, um, so, the, the preparation process. I think, in, in my opinion, kalbi is actually kind of a complicated marinating process because there's fruit involved. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, apples. These usually use Asian pears, mm -hmm. which um, is tougher to get unless you go to like an Asian specialty store. But the purpose of those is mostly to tenderize. But here, there's really, you, you don't need to tenderize you don't need much. That. You with don't this need one. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people sometimes will use a um, pineapple because mm -hmm. the bromelain in, in it will tenderize, mm -hmm. or kiwi. So I use kiwis, apple, ginger, garlic, um, and a whole slew of other things, which you'll have to watch the show for. So now, versus if you were, let's say you were using that same marinade for more of a like for whatever, like a sirloin as an example, right? Which is ten, usually yeah. a little bit a little bit tougher, right? Mm -hmm. How long did you marinate it for? Overnight. Okay. Yeah. So overnight. Overnight, guys. Can I, do, can for, I just do this? For anything is when the magic... Hold on. Let's do it together. There's so much fat in this one. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, guys. I, this is... This is... It's getting cold, too. All right. Cheers. Cheers. High five -y. Can I get a high five for that? <laughs> yeah. My man. <laughs> oh. Oh, guys, Korean kalbi, A5 Wagyu, short ribs, rock. All right, Daryl, me, the people of the world cannot wait any longer. They want to see us eat the Argentinian cut. Okay. I think we've made it wait long enough. I say, let me take this one here. I'll take this one here. Ready? Mm-hmm. Now, you must, you must put some chimichurri on it. May I? Yes. Can I just glop it right yes. off? Yes. Don't be, don't be conservative with it. There you go, buddy. This is good for you, man. This is extra virgin olive oil, parsley, cayenne pepper. We've got some paprika in here. Mm-hmm. We've got all the goodens. Go. Ready? I got a little small more. A5, what is this, Kobe, short rib. Done in the style of Argentinian. Chimichurri style. With chimichurri sauce. Are you ready? Do you already have it? I cheated. I went ahead. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, the, the, you just said the vinegar, the balsamic vinegar in it, really helps cut through the fat mm -hmm. of the meat. Um, I think it's a, actually even a better balance than the other things that we've had as far as like the balance of fat and the balance of acid because it really just kind of, you know, cuts right through it mm -hmm. and, and makes it more palatable. Where in like the other ones were just kind of fatty, we had to like get through it. Delicious as they were, but this thing has a little bit better of a balance. I agree. I agree. 
The only thing that I regret, and this is by no means anything, it's a production value thing. It's the fact that we had to wait and talk and prepare, and as it gets colder, obviously you want our food nice and piping hot. Yeah, you prefer. That's the only thing, but, you know, we gotta be real with you guys. Mm hmm Because we love you. And if you're- M-O-U-S-E. So do you have a favorite between the three? These are all so good. All um, delicious. You know, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I want to okay, so I want to say the Argentinian, because I love a good chimichurri. And like I said, I love the way that the, mm. the acid cuts through the fat. It's such a nice balance. But yet, I love the Korean, and I love the sushi. I, Daryl, I love them all. I know, I don't think there's really a need to make a choice. I love them all. They're, <laughs> they're all so good. This is on the scale of possibly too much. You know, too much richness. It's rich. I mean, yeah, it's freaking amazing. It's it's an experience. That I said before, it's it's kind of a novelty. Mm -hmm. You know, if I were to eat something every day, I think I would probably go for the prime. You know, but right. once in a while, just to have this experience is pretty darn cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Get yourself one. Impress somebody. Do it three different ways, and you'll be as cool as Daryl and I. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, guys, you stuck with us through this entire journey from Kincaid's. By the way, shout out to Kincaid's. You guys are awesome out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Friendly people. Come on over. Mention my name. Mention Gaston Ameria. I think they'll treat right. you right. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us once again for another episode of Gaston Ameria. Stay tuned. Please subscribe to us. It's completely free to you, and it really helps the channel a lot. And... Bye! Bye. <laughs>